I uh, went to Parkway North High School around the St. Louis area. And um, under Brian Reeves, I learned my first sort of choral uh, education, had found my first choral love, and uh, found myself going to school at uh, Millican University in Decatur, Illinois, to study vocal music education. And after that, I went directly to get my master's at University of Missouri in Columbia uh, to study choral conducting. And then after that, I landed here at West High. And um, well, I suppose that's it as far as me. But the jazz choir here, you know, jazz has always been on the side of what I've been doing. I sang vocal jazz in high school, and I was always around it at Millican and in college. Um, although I never sang in the groups. All my friends were in the groups. I did early music. You kind of have to choose between the two. Um, but then at Mizzou, I had an opportunity uh, as a TA to teach their vocal jazz group their Hit Street Harmony. And I said, okay, if I'm going to teach this vocal jazz thing, I better go learn. So I read, um, I read Steve Zagree's book, and I read Paris Rutherford's book, and I said, okay, um, I better go play some jazz too. And I had some jazz piano chops just from kind of listening. And so I got lucky and joined the jazz band at Mizzou playing piano and took some lessons and kind of fell in love. The whole uh, world of vocal jazz just kind of took me. And so when I came here to Parkway West, they had a jazz choir. Um, and so I kind of just took what it was and took it as far as I could as far as the world of jazz goes. Harmony is a tough one because you have a lot of close chords. Um, I suppose it really starts with auditions. Uh, when I audition kids, one of the big things that I'm making sure to, to know is uh, tonal memory wise, how is a singer? Um, if they have good tonal memory, meaning that they can sing a five note, seven note pattern back to you after you play or sing it to them. If they're good at tonal memory, then they'll be able to hold their part when there's a close harmony right next to it. And um, when it comes to that harmony piece, when we're finally together and rehearsing, um, a lot of freezing chords, a lot of talking about relationships. I use solfege um, in traditional choir, and so the kids are used to that. And so I'll use that to, to get them to understand relationships between pitches. And um, kind of get them in love with the, with the vocal jazz chords like I am. And uh, once, they, once they find the love for it, it's, uh, it's no stopping it. You know, they just want to sing more and more. I don't, unless it is the melody line. Uh, I, in fact, I, I, I'm always saying that unless you're singing the melody, you are, you've got to be supportive of the melody line. You're the cushion upon which the melody rests. Um, not to say that you're not singing with intensity and that you're not really deliberate with your onsets and releases. Um, I think that's, that's fair game, uh, articulations and everything like that. But volume wise, uh, usually it's gotta be less than the melody. And you've gotta, um, you know, Kerry Marsh has an approach to his group, which I, I like very much, where he has a lead soprano, very much like a lead trumpet who is in charge of shaping the sound, and everybody is on board with assimilating to that idea. And the melody is where that idea has to come from. Um, so th that's kind of the role of the, the harmony singers behind the melody. To complement the melody, you should sing it like the melody is sung. Absolutely. No, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. Well. The biggest piece of advice that I can give is, is to make friends with people who do know and who are very interested in that. Because the truth, truth is, I have uh, a functional but relatively minimal knowledge of uh, video and audio. But I, I got lucky enough to make friends in my community who are, are really talented at what they do. And so um, they're really great friends to the choir, both alums, it just so happens to be. 
And so we're able to do some of the ex these exciting things. And for them, I, f I hope and I feel that it's a, a creative project that they enjoy. But also, uh, what that allows me to do is do what I should be doing, and that is um, making sure the kids are learning accountable uh, for the sound and for everything else. Um, I'm sure that there are people out there that can do it all as far as audio and video goes. But right now, I'll tell you, I'm not one of those people. I think it's important for any teacher of music to be performing music regularly. Um, if it's something that you require of your students, you can't go wrong by doing it yourself. Um, and so Vocal Edge is one of those venues for me where I get out in front of an audience and I get the butterflies just like everybody else and it happens on a regular basis. And so I can stay sharp in that way. Um, I'm constantly reevaluating my craft and what I do uh, when I sing and, and when I beatbox. And uh, I think that's just really healthy. And uh, it also comes through to my students. You know, I tell them often that, you know, I'm not perfect. I get out there and perform and do my absolute best. And there will be times when uh, the performances are not as good as some other performances. And so I can speak to them from that very real world perspective of a performer. And I think that goes a long way. That sort of um, that sort of honest viewpoint into the world of performance goes a long way with kids. Uh, from a, a student perspective, uh, vocal jazz is sort of the link between classical singing, which is terribly important, tons of beautiful music, and I have a deep love for that music the link between that classical music and commercially marketable music and singing. Um, and vocal jazz has a foot in both camps, really does. And uh, so for kids, that helps them buy in to some of the traditional choral things that is harder to get kids to buy into. So it helps with buy-in. But uh, what it also does is kids get extremely good at reading syncopated rhythms. There's so much syncopation in jazz, I found, that when you go back to reading classical rhythms, it's like a walk in the park. You know, where rhythm, I think, many times is the most difficult part of reading music and understanding music. It's what defines music the most. Um, kids struggle with that, but after they've sung jazz, they don't have a choice. They have to learn syncopated rhythm because it's all over. And so you go back to the traditional choral classroom and, uh, you know, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, four in a row, no problem. You know what I'm saying? We, uh, we got the word that Macy's was doing this competition uh, for a high school uh, vocal group to put on a music video of an a cappella rendition of Michael Jackson's I Want You Back. And so we said, Let's go for it. Let's have a lot of fun, and we'll learn from the process. And uh, that was in August. And so in a fairly short amount of time, a few months, um, I, again, reached out to all of my uh, friends who I think know more than I do as far as um, video, audio goes, uh, but also um, mixing. And I, I reached out to the drama teacher to kind of go for a storyline. And it's become, I had a friend arrange the chart. And it's been kind of this collaborative uh, workup to the product. And I, I, you know, we just filmed the video uh, earlier this week. And I don't know uh, what other folks out there are going to do for the competition, but I'm just really, really excited about uh, the quality of the product that the students were able to create. Um, I think the, the, biggest, the biggest piece that seemed to make it all work was that everybody who was involved in the process was open to uh, sharing and giving and, and receiving ideas. And we kind of were bouncing ideas back and forth until we settled on something, uh, whether it be visually or audio or whatever or, or sound, where we were just like, oh, yeah, that'll be great. You know, it, and it didn't happen at first. It took a lot of bouncing ideas off of one another. 
if the choral world or the vocal jazz world especially is going toward a place of uh, regular recordings and video, um, it's terribly important to have this information readily available uh, to professionals in the, in the education world um, because right now it's, it's really not. And I wouldn't know it. I wouldn't know how to go about getting mechanical rights or how to get sync rights uh, had I not just got, you know, gone to Kerry Marsh and said, hey, how do I do this? <laughs> you know, I know something needs to be done, uh, but what do I do? And so you know, reaching out to people who know uh, is, the way, is the only way I was going to find that information. Um, personally, I would love it if you guys would do a session about that. I think that that's on the top priority list of things that people need to know um, in, in the changing world that we're moving toward. The first thing I would say is to take your voice and make it your, uh, turn it into your, your golden craft. And what I mean by that is that everything that you do with your voice matters from here on out. And you become very critical of your own singing and you evaluate and say, okay, what, what can I change? You record yourself, you listen, you're practicing often. And, um, and then you'll grow. If you do that, if you're a human being, you'll grow. And that's what you need to start. But then the biggest thing as far as getting into that world, I would say, and this is just from what I've seen, is that the people who are successful are yes people, are people who say yes to anything that flies in their direction. And even if it's a stretch, even if uh, man, it's just going to be a really tough week if we, if, we're, if we put that one last thing in. If they can say yes, 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 then those are the people who, who make the connections, who uh, get the opportunities that maybe others don't. Because the truth is there are fantastic singers out there who work a communications job. Uh, you know, there are fantastic performers out there who don't do anything professionally with music. And, um, the world is full of great performers, but it's the people who network and who um, are always talking to their friends or on social media and saying yes to opportunities. Those are the people that I see um, being successful and kind of ascending to that level. I, I love the interviews that you have up there. I've watched most of them. And I think they're extremely informative. Um, I just wish that it could be more uh, accessible. So for instance, if I want to tell my students to go watch a video, they would have to create an account uh, with behind the mic. And so that makes it harder for kids or for somebody just surfing who says, ooh, what's this website devoted to spreading the word about vocal jazz and education? Um, they run into that. Uh, that roadblock and so they don't get access right away to all of this great content um, and wisdom. I mean really I've learned so much just from uh, watching those videos. Um, but otherwise I think that the platform is great and that the vision is great and so keep going. I'll be there watching. <laughs> is there Here's something. Uh, it Wouldn't it be great if Alton, you know what a fantastic vocal jazz group and a fantastic recording sounds like and looks like. Um, wouldn't it be great if there, were, if there were sort of this database or you know, link page to great videos and where those, where those videos are from and who made them and all the details with it? Um, I, find, I find myself finding uh, videos, if I'm searching for a chart or something like that, I find videos that have poor quality all the time. But it's few and far between to find the high quality ones. And when I do, it's like a, it's like a diamond, you know, and I can't wait to show my students. But imagine if there were, you know, 50 right there that, that were great and we could become inspired by. Okay. Uh, there's one more thing that I want to... Um, okay kind of let you know if that's okay. 
Um, yeah. I just want to, I do a few other things right now in addition to uh, my post at West, and I would, I would be remiss if I didn't mention them, uh, that, I'm, right that I'm doing them. Um, in addition to my teaching at Parkway West, I'm the director of music ministries at New Hope Presbyterian Church in St. Charles, Missouri. Um, I teach one of the St. Louis Children's Choirs, the Chamber Singers, and it's my third year doing that. Um, I sing and beatbox for Vocal Edge, which we've talked about, uh, St. Louis's premier vocal band. And I'm also a new member to Pro Arte St. Louis, which is a professional early music ensemble in the St. Louis area. And um, doing my first concert with them in October, very excited for it. Uh, I want to say thank you so much for having me on BehindTheMic.org. I've been a big fan of your website for as long as it's been uh, in existence. Watched a lot of the videos, and it's truly an honor, and I'm flattered to have been asked to do an interview. Um, I want to also thank um, the folks at Parkway West who make what I do um, my job very easy, the parents, the community, uh, the kids, but also the staff and the administration. And um, I'd like to thank my wife, Ashley, and my two kids who allow me to do what I do all the time.